the stunning Porsche 959. In this video, we're going to have a look at a brand new inbox one, we're going to have a look at a built one, and we're also going to run one. Right guys, we're off to meet a Tamiya Legends member who is going to give us something to bring back and also he's going to show some really cool stuff. So you know what that means, road trip time. So this is Stuart, say hello Stuart. Hi Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> look at that thing. Right guys, look at this. So there is the one we've just picked up, but look what's underneath. Another one. And do you know what's special about this one? That's right. Brand new in box. Look at that. That's something you don't see every day. Look at that. That is awesome. And look at look what else we've got to show you. Don't know if you guys know what this one is. Obviously, as you can see, it's the 30th anniversary thing. But just have a look at this. Look at that, Bling City. All the tear off, look at them wheels. This is a really good looking car. This is the one show that's got the wider rear wheels, hasn't it? Uh, we also I think are the same, but oh, the, the, stance, same. the stance is, is it the, the stance? Same. Yeah, and it's also got the, uh, the uh, certificate in there as well. Or the three oh, page, wow. uh, yeah, two different yeah. framing. Uh, wow. That is stunning. Oh, guys, this kit comes with this beautiful certificate celebrating 30 years of Tamir RC cars. Would you see that front page, Stuart? Sure. Oh, it's probably from this page here. Yeah. What's on the... Look at that. How nice is that? That's stunning. And check out this carbon chassis, guys. Sorry, it's a bit light, isn't it? Look at that. 35. Oh, that is absolutely stunning. That's a thing of beauty right there. So guys, as you can see, I came back with all of it. Now, either of these kits are not mine, unfortunately. Um, I've got the brand new inbox one here, and this is a kit. Um, by the time you see this video, some lucky person will have won this on, the, on our Facebook raffle that we do. Um, but this one is for my buddy Stuart, who um, is in the US, and I bought it for him. Um, and just looking after it for him but I, it, he's kindly says I can do what I want with it um, so at the end of this video we're definitely going to give this little thing a run it'll be a gentle run but uh, yeah I'm super excited because this is kind of a I've been desperate to do a Porsche 959 video but now I've got all this stuff to look at it's just superb so um, let's get cracking so this stunning car came out in July 1986. It's 112 scale and it's probably one of the most iconic Tamiya cars of all time. Um, to have one in this condition with box and manual is amazing, all original. But to have a brand new in box one, that's right up there. I mean, to me, that's right up there with a blazing blazer in, um, for me anyway, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's, people have different holy grails of different Tamiya kits, but a brand new inbox one of these has to be in the top three, I would have said. So as I say, it's 112 scale. Um, this chassis was used on two different cars. So I think I got my dates wrong earlier on. The Porsche came out in October 1986, and in July 87 came the Toyota Celica GRB, which I'll show you some pictures of now. Um, Performance wise they're identical, um, obviously different body shell, different wheels, um, main difference being the Celica came with a centre ball diff where the 959 didn't. Um, what else was there? And the, we'll have a look when we take the shell off this, but the ceramic resistor was moved um, away from the front end as you can see in this picture I'm showing you. Right then, back to the 959. So there's a bit of a misconception um, about the Porsche 959 and that there's two versions of it where the decals change. Now, I, like many others, assumed wrongly that um, it was Tamiya lost the licensing laws, or due to the licensing, licensing laws, Tamiya lost the ability to put the Rothman's tobacco brand on here. 
um, hence why you get some of the racing version. Now, reading up on it as I've done this morning on the um, TamiaBase.com website, shout out to TamiaBase.com, best Tamiya website out there. Um, it was actually so, it, I thought the Rothmans version came first and then later down the line it was changed to the racing. But no, um, they were both out at the same time. And it was, depending where in the world the Tamiya was send, sending this, was, it was down to that particular country, country's licensing laws about tobacco advertising. So um, the majority were the Rothmans. Um, as I'm putting some pictures up of the racing one. From a distance, you cannot tell a, a difference. It's just at the, where it says Rothmans here, it says racing and same on the bonnet. It's still got the sort of blue-ish logo, but it's obviously, it's not the cigarette brand anymore. Now, I also used to think that the um, the Rothmans one was a rare one, but sort of reading up on it now, I kind of think if you've got the racing version, that's probably a little bit more rarer than this. But I don't know. It'd be interesting in the comments, guys, um, what you think. But whichever one you've got are absolutely superb. These two with the boxes just happen to be the, the full Rothmans um, versions which again is mega cool. There was one other change. So as I said, there was one other change on the box and that was this Porsche logo um, here. Um, so as you can see by the picture I'm showing you, um, what I thought was the racing version came without that Porsche um, logo. Now, what I actually don't know is if that actually ties up with the uh, Rothmans or the racing version. I assume it does, but I'd be interested in comments as well why that changed, or was that something just completely too different to do with maybe the Porsche licensing agreement? I don't know. I'd be interested if any of you guys know that. So, that's the basics. So, what we'll do now is we will um, dig out the new inbox and let's have a look at that one first. Well, look at that thing. As I know I keep repeating myself, but you seriously do not see anything like that very often. How many new inbox Porsche 959s do you think there is in the world right now? There ain't going to be many, is there? I mean, it's incredible that this thing's not been built. So I'm not going to dig it all out of the box because I don't really want to touch this thing. But as you can see in the old style of Tamiya packaging, You've got all your um, vac formed blister packs here. You've got your hardware there, loads of stuff underneath. Original shell, original manual and decals, original tyres. I mean, I don't know why I'm calling them original, it's new in box. But that thing is super sweet. Let's just have a closer look. Look at that, brand new Technigol motor. The gorgeous speed controller. This kit came with front LED lights as well. As I say, I'm not going to open it up. I have looked through it all to make sure it's all there. Um, but, I, you know, you don't want to mess with these things, to be honest. But so cool. Look at that box art. Don't get much better than that, does it? I wonder if, I, if you'd mind if I cut the front off that and stuck it on the wall. Yeah, I think you might mind. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to show you that just because it is mega cool. But um, next up, let's have a look at the built one. Right, just look at that thing. Oh my goodness me. I mean, it's it's just ready for painting. Obviously, when you saw it at the beginning, it had the window masks in. Uh, because I believe Stuart, whose car it was originally, was about to paint it before he sold it. But because we don't know what the other Stuart's going to do with his car, I just asked him, can I take the window masks out? Um, just so we can see the cockpit and what have you. Because that's all been painted to a really good standard. The decals are a little bit rough. But I'm pretty sure with a little bit of gentle hot air, we can we could fix most of that. Um, I cannot tell you how fragile this polycarbonate is, guys. It's If you've only used modern Tamiya's, it's, it's literally half the thickness. And that's why these, these shells get trashed. Um, the car itself has a horrible sort of mechanism to hold the front end down. It does. It's on four body posts, but this full front end and the bottom of the bumper, which I'll show you in detail later, tucks under a second bumper. So it's always under strain all the time, which is terrible for these wheel arches. Basically, one shunt at the front end and you're going to crack the wheel arches or worse. 
Um, super, super fragile, hence why you don't see many of these things running. The car itself, in my opinion, has some of the best actual working suspension I've ever seen. It's um, And it's the design of it as well will blow you away if you've never seen one. But the suspension itself is superb. It's obviously oil dampers, but as I say, when we take the shell off, um, you're going to see how those oil dampers work. But um, absolutely superb thing. Um, it's got LED light buckets in with, as I say, working LEDs at the front. If I lift that up, you can see the black bumper coming through the shell and that's sort of wedged hard into it. It's a really horrible thing to take the body on and off on this. Um, hence why I guess so many guys go for the um, um, Riri. But just look at that, I mean, oh my word. I don't know what you guys think, leave it in the comments, but Stuart is debating whether just to leave this car unpainted. I kind of would as well, um, for two reasons. It's got a few tiny little cracks in it. Obviously handling is to get it all masked properly and painted. You know, you are risking more damage. Um, but I actually think it looks superb as it is unpainted. Obviously all the decals are on. Because the decals are on, that would make it much easier to paint because obviously you can the mask it's it should be all blue at the bottom or white at the top, so you can hide you can do your masking line behind the gold decal. Um, so it might be something we do in the future. I don't know. That's up to Stuart. At this moment in time, I I really don't want to touch it, but um, that doesn't mean we won't in the future. Um, it's got this gorgeous. I don't know if I can show you exhaust pipe. You see the two exhausts? How cool is that? Um, it's also got mirrors, which you can see. And then it has these roof lights. Well, now obviously none of these are painted. Now, um, one of these is loose because the cockpit's broke on one side, which I'll show you. But these actually bolt all the way down into the back of the rear of the cockpit to hold the cockpit in the shell. Um, again, we'll show you all this. The reason I'm sort of taking my time and showing you with the shell on is because I don't want to keep taking the shell on and off. That's um, a big no-no for me. Um, it, this particular model does need a little bit of repair. It, on this mould here, <clears throat> you see here, it's got two, these are actually painted different colours. These are two little sort of lights on the roof of the rally car. Now unfortunately this one has the tops come off. So that would need a little bit, I mean we could just glue a little bit of polycarbon on there, but with it being so small, it would be a little bit tricky to do. Um, but, you know, it would definitely need doing if we're going to take this further. So I think that's enough with the shell. We'll take the shell off, off and then we'll have a look at, at the inside of it, and then we'll look at this gorgeous chassis. So this is it obviously with the shell off and again I can't tell you how horrible it is to remove the shell on and off at that front end. Get a better idea of those little exhaust pipes bolted down. Um, as I say the cockpit has got two little um, screw and bolts at the front and then the top these two bolt down to the roof lights and then you can see the LEDs. But all this front end here wedges under the chassis and as I say it's always under pressure or under strain. Let's have a look at the cockpit, see if we can show you that. That's had some great detail painted onto it. Absolutely superb. Just put that light back down. It's actually cut one way, so it only fits one way. But that cockpit is superb. Um, that's probably the worst of the decaling there. Can't really fix that. Might be able to do, make that look better. Um, as I say, the front's got a slight crack in it here. Now, when it's just sat under no strain, you can't see it, but as it moves, it's here. Anyway, we're not going to play with that. Um, as I say, it's got the LED, so it has a plug up, plug straight into the chassis. So, let's have a look at the chassis. And there she is. And if you've not seen one before, this thing is very, very different from um, anything else. It's a real, in my opinion, it's a really complicated design. Um, it's, I think this is why I, I don't think this will ever be reread on this chassis, is because the design's complicated. Well, it's complicated. It's going to be expensive to replicate, um, and unfortunately, the design wasn't very good because the car was so fragile. So I think with all those sort of things in place, that's why 
Anyway, as you can see, this thing is gorgeous. This came as standard with the Technigold mortar. And that's another, looks like another new one fitted in here. Um, servo at the back for your um, throttle, free speed. And then if we just turn this round, we've got a st big steering servo, oh, not big servo, but we've got the steering servo at the back. And that's how that works. Receiver in the middle, and that's pretty much it. So we've got both diffs. I think I'm guessing it's fully ball rest, but um, I really don't know. And if we just put it on its side, you get your four wheel drive. So this is a suspension setup. So it's got float. Let me just turn this around. It has floating springs at this side, and then it has your oil damper unit here really really trick and really nice as well it's really smooth it's um, as i say there's there's a couple of cars that i think the suspension on tamiya uh, uh, is amazing this is one of them so on the front slightly different got your little oil reservoir at the top um, but this is all sort of one shock i'm just getting my thumb under there you can see it working Super smooth. This is that second lip I was telling you about where the body has to go all the way underneath this and wedge in. Now the problem being is you have to put the body in first, lift it at an angle, and then you lift the shell over, and then you have to, with your fingers, push the shell to get it into the mounting holes. It's, um, yeah, it's, I don't want to keep going on about it. It's just because the thing is that rare and it's that fragile that every time you do it, it's really squeaky bum time. Um, what else can I show you? You see the drive shaft going down here, prop shaft, sorry. Um, that's the plug for the front LEDs, which is really short as well. So when you do connect that, it's, it, it makes taking the shell off and on even more of a mission. If you remember back to the um, Celica chassis we showed during the pictures, um, this FRP mount has gone and that was replaced with a plastic mount and this whole um, ceramic um, free speed resistor was moved to a plate over here. Don't know why they did that. Possibly for impact damage, I'm guessing, but I don't know. Um, and I think the back end on the Porsche, but I'd have to look at the picture again. I think there's something slightly different. I'm oh, sorry, on the Celica. I think there's something slightly different on that as well. Um, underneath, look how clean this thing is. It's ridiculous. Look at that. It's not a scratch on it. That's stunning. Um, really tight fit for your battery. 7.2 racing pack. Uh, this is on a plastic mount which lifts up and down to slide your battery in and out. Um, and that's about it. I've had a couple of these things in the past. That racing one I showed you earlier was um, mine from about six years ago. And um, I did a full strip down on that thing. And um, the way this all comes to part, this, the way it all comes to part is it's really interesting. It's um, it's quite a fun chassis to work on. But again, on something like that, I mean, this particular one doesn't need anything, any work doing to it. But if you've got a bit of a rough one, you've got to be mega gentle with it. Because um, just taking the things apart and putting things back on, it can break. And, and as I guess the majority of you guys will know, these parts are mega rare and they're bloody expensive as well. Just on a side note, the um, Tamiya did um, a hop-up tyre for it, which was a slick, which you see a lot. When you see these for sale, you normally sort of see the, what I guess this is the, the original rally block tyre, although it's 112 scale. Um, and then you do see some with the same yellow wheels, but with the slick tyres for tarmac i guess um what an app so i i i hope you're really enjoying this guys because um i am this thing is awesome so what i want to do next now you've seen it all is as i said stewart's give us a permission to have a little run with this now i fitted or i've tried it with the the radio gear it's got in it and the transmitter it came with and there's there's an issue with it and i don't know what it is but it's twitching all over and i would not dare run it like that so what i'm going to try do and i think this will work i'm going to get some modern 2.4 radio gear that i've got i've got um, a tactic set which has a antenna less um, receiver 
and I think I'm just gonna swap the receiver over for mine and then we'll plug the battery in and we'll see if we can get this in a position where we can take it out for a very gentle spin. So let's dig that radio gear out. So as a little size comparison, I've just dug out my Trick TTO 1 10th scale chassis. And obviously this is 1 12th. So I've set the back end up at the same level, but you can see with it being 1 12th, the difference in length. It's, it's a funny one because when the shell's on it, it doesn't look a particularly small car because it's 112, it's a little bit like the lunchbox. That's a 112 truck and you know, it doesn't, you can run lunchboxes against with Monster Beetles, Blackfoot, so it doesn't look out of place. It doesn't look like a small, it doesn't look much smaller. I think this is pretty much the same. Um, although I'll show you the difference now in the, when I put the two body, Porsche body shells together. But the body shells, that makes a, that looks like a hell of a difference now as again, 112, 110 and um, the the 911 looks huge next to this 959 but again i have to say when you've got it and it's all built up and it's running it doesn't feel like a small car for some reason um but yeah i just thought i'd show you that size comparison so this is a brand new set never used um tactic um trigger radio that i got with a different car but as i say it comes with this um antennaless receiver it's a little bit chunky it's not the smallest um, but yeah, I'll just double check the plugs on the car chassis first to make sure everything's going to fit. But then I think we'll just whip the old Futaba receiver out and we'll fit this one in. Then we can put a battery to it just to see um, if this is going to be a goer or not. Right guys, that's been a success. As I say, I've not sat it down yet, but um, just put the receiver in. Um, steering we have. It's very limited steering, I have to say. But it'll be okay for this. And then throttle. So that looks all good to go now. Oh God, I'm excited. <laughs> Um, right, I'll just um, stick this receiver down so it's not going to rattle and I will also just stick a little tie wrap uh, and keep all this wiring together just to be on the safe side. Okay guys, on a scale of 1 to 10, how excited am I right now about taking this thing out for a spin? My, my bum is doing that, oh my god. Um, I've been sad, I've taken the radio transmitter upstairs um, and the, left the car down here, make sure everything's working, I don't want no range issues with it where it just goes rocketing off and smashes into a curb or something. Um, as I say, this run's going to be gentle, but um, God, I'm so excited about this. I can't tell you how excited I am. Um, I have... I think I've had a tiny little blast with one many years ago, one I bought to probably sell on and I probably just made sure it was working on the drive or whatever. But yeah, yeah forget that. Th this is going to be a proper little run. Oh my God, I'm excited. So I'm going to charge the battery up um, and then we'll take it to a little nice smooth car park that's um, not very far from here. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll have a blast. Can't wait. Right guys, squeaky bum time, and I am bricking myself. I really am scared. Um, so anyway, let's get it on. We've got, we've come to a quiet road, and uh, we'll just give it a very gentle blast. Guys, here we go. This would have been ballistic back in the day. You can see even at low speeds, the suspension rolling, it's amazing. If I turn fast, I lose the back end. Obviously I don't want to do that too often because I don't want to take the risk of uh, rolling it. Right, what I'm going to do, we're just going to take it down, let's just see if we can get it flat, flat out. <laughs> I 
That is awesome to see. That is amazing. I'll tell you what it is guys, it's absolutely fantastic to see this running. What a thing. Well guys, that was just amazing. I can't tell you how much I enjoyed that. I found myself going a little bit harder with it towards the end, you know, more sort of sort of harder turns and putting on the power and shouldn't really be doing that. But um, what an amazing RC car and one of the most iconic and famous of all time. I have to say, if you've never drove one, you really do get a sense of sort of realism with it, the way it rolls and stuff. Um, it's it's epic. Um, I've not used that word for a while, but that's the only word that sums this car up. It's epic. The only thing that would have beaten today for me was if this was fully painted on some sand and just to get some pictures of it sliding and kicking up sand and stuff. But um, I wasn't there, to be honest. So that's a massive tick on one of my bucket list things. Um, very, very happy with that. Stuart, if you're watching this video, I can't thank you enough for allowing me to make this video and especially to um, to run your car. You're going to be very happy with this thing. Um, so I'll end this video there. I think this is one of the most enjoyable videos I've made on this channel so far. Absolutely loved it from start to finish. Anyway guys, thanks so much for watching. It's really appreciated. If you are new to this channel, if you could please consider liking and subscribing to support us. And if you do that, smash that notification buzzer for our weekly videos. And as always guys, happy RCing.